to the anti-religious scripture study with me, Karen B., and Just Jack Flat Earth. Shabbat Shalom, y'all. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> well, welcome back. We're back after being gone for a couple of weekends. So And then and then late because of me. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. I had uh I had failure of alarm and well hey it's the day of rest i just took a little a little extra rest that's all <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right but uh i'll just you know today we're probably going to get into something that will uh spiral people which is typical you know people that don't like uh reading scripture that is an antithesis of their current lifestyle but keep an open mind um it it all seems new to all of us when we first start. And, uh, I mean, you know, we used to believe that we lived on a spinning ball in a vacuum. So <laughs> come on. Um, <laughs> uh, also the, the last couple of weeks, it was kind of, um, we had a lot of traveling for, for the Moedim and then our, our good friend, Bob Nodell passed. So mm -hmm. there, there, we had a, a good meeting on last Shabbat in memorial and it was good to get together with all of our friends um in the in the area that knew bob and yeah i think uh bob is having a much more interesting experience in his current um consciousness so let, let's just say i don't think it's it, it's hard for the people around him but he's not suffering let me right. put it that way. This is true. not by not by any means is he suffering. I would agree with that. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to read my disclaimer. Just Jack's disclaimer to the religious. If you believe it's wrong to study scripture outside of your religion or denomination, if you believe your religious leaders or church fathers are incapable of having inherited anti-scriptural traditions of men, if you've already made up your mind about scripture, including the scripture shouldn't be studied at all, then the stream is not for you. To others, if you are open-minded to others' opinions, if you haven't made up your mind about scripture, if you've been turned off to religion but believe there's truth in scripture, that may have been changed or him by religion. If you live according to scripture and like to dig in and discover more, then the stream is for you. We are looking at scripture in the original language using concordances or dictionaries for root words, as well as context from a non-religion perspective. We will as well have life experience discussion. We are not here to argue with others about theology or doctrine by the traditions of men, including Catholicism, Christianity, or Judaism. We will be discussing the importance of origins and show how religions contradict the scriptures. There you go. All right. So so there was a, a couple of people at that meetup that um that I've met on multiple occasions, and they've recently watched a couple of our anti-religious scripture studies. Mm -hmm. And I asked them, uh, have they watch the you know the first episode and most times they say no they have not if you're listening to this show for the first time um or you've listened to it for a few times and you have not watched the first episode it is an absolute must to understand why we're doing what we're doing how we're doing what we're doing so please 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 if you haven't watched the work first couple episodes please watch them um and the other thing was, is as I was having this discussion with them, uh, we were talking about all, all sorts of stuff, including the Sabbath, including the dietary laws, including, you know, a lot of different subjects mm -hmm. uh, based on the, the things that we've already gone through in Genesis and Exodus. He says, well, you should recap on those subjects uh, every episode. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> it would be like we would be on the screen like all shabbat like the whole day every shabbat yeah. in order to recap on everything so people would get sick of it that's why i like at the end of the show to kind of <laughs> glance through the um the chat and see if there's any specific questions about torah and if that comes up then um we'll go through it if it's something that we can hit on quickly if it's something that we need to make a whole entire episode on we'll do that in the future mm -hmm. um like if if um if anybody's noticed we haven't excuse me we haven't been going specifically chapter to chapter uh for leviticus because it's 
it's too painful of a process for us to build it back. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is it is a very very tedious process. When I start a new book, um, it's like I'm starting from scratch again. I have to retranslate every word, every context. You know, so it's easier for me now to just address the subjects in Leviticus that were not addressed specifically in Genesis and Exodus. They were alluded to but they don't specifically refer to the commands like for instance the dietary laws right it's mentioning something about the clean and the unclean when noah is putting animals on the ark but what are the clean and the unclean well leviticus you know um what was it 11 or 12 we went through that and it was talking about uh the dietary i guess it's 11 yeah so that's why, you know, we're going through specific things, uh, separations between a male child and a female child when you're giving birth to them. That's a very specific thing. So uh, today we're going uh, on a subject that was very, um, it was a major transition when my wife and I started paying attention to this chapter. Um it's about what's what we call nada. Nada means uh, set apart. It's the the uh, going out and coming in. Um, so, in the okay, let me show you something really quick. I just thought of an idea that might help illustrate. Um, trying to find a Hebrew word that starts with B. Let's see well i can just go like this and then pull up the dictionary and then all right so then i can go to strong so i can go to here and since bet is the second letter of the olive bet it shouldn't be um too far from the very top to find a b word and then find the ancient hebrew next to that and then find something that pulls out the root oh nope i did that wrong sorry <laughs> do, 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 do. okay actually this helps there you go all right so i nice. just pulled up the hebrew olive bet Mm -hmm. So if you look at the second one here, uh, where it says tent floor plan, right? Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Can the tent? Can the um? Yes, everybody. Can the looking. audience at home seen it? <laughs> yeah, they're looking at what you're sharing. Okay, cool. All right, so the second letter is a bet, and it's a tent floor plan. Okay, so if you look at it, it has an opening in the upper left hand corner here. Mm -hmm. That would be like the main entrance to the tent, like you're looking from above down on top of a tent. Mm -hmm. All right. And then if you see, there's like a dividing line and then there's another room off to the right. Mm -hmm. This room would be designated for when a woman is Nada. So she would have a separate door, a separate area that is just for her to be separate during her monthly cycle. If mm -hmm. that uh, if that visual helps. Mm -hmm. So. There is this tradition going around, a recent tradition, by the way, not ancient tradition, that when the woman was Nada, they would kick her out of the camp and make her stay in, stay in a red tent outside the tent. I dare anybody to find that in the Torah anywhere. It's <laughs> nonsense. It's nonsense. All right. Anyway. Um, hold on one second. <laughs> I'm I'm actually shivering because I have a fan on me and I'm like I'm <clears> shaking <throat> from the cold. So I just had my daughter turn off the fan. So all right. All right. Ooh. Why am I chilly? It's horrible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can go ahead and re read whenever you're ready. All right. And then we'll uh we'll get into it. Okay. And Yehovah spoke to Moshe and to Aharon, saying Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, when any man has a discharge from his flesh, his discharge, his discharge is unclean. Okay, so this word is an issue or a flow, 
And then by extension, uh, yellow, because sometimes discharge is yellow, but it's not always about yellow because if you look at it in different contexts, sometimes it's about um, an issue of blood or a flow of blood. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when it says stuff like issue, um, this one says a running issue, a running issue out of his flesh. So this is okay, uh, but you have to understand that this running issue is the same as uh, when it talks about about a female and she it talks about her monthly discharge, okay, her monthly flow, mm-hmm. right? It's not just something bad. It could be just a natural flow as well. But in this case, of course, because it's a man, this is a man having a flow out of his flesh. This is like a an open wound, etc. Right? Mm-hmm. And because of that, he is unclean. And of course, unclean means that he is impure. He can't go into the tabernacle uh, until he presents himself as clean. And this um, and avoid uh, uh, avoid connection because the way that I say, you know, about clean and unclean is about not just your your physical, but your uh, your metaphysical, I guess you could say your, um, your frequency, right. Mm -hmm. About what mode you're in based on the interactions you're having. Right. So like, if you're, if you're not feeling well, your frequency is down, right. Mm -hmm. It's like that. All right. Verse three. And this is his uncleanliness or uncleanness. In regard to his discharge, whether his flesh runs with his discharge or his flesh is stopped up by his discharge, it is his uncleanness, uncleanness. Okay, so, right. So even if it's, even if it's a, uh, even if it's scabbed mm-hmm. over, if it's still got a flow to it, like, you know, it's still unclean. Hmm. Any bed becomes unclean on which he who has the discharge lies, and any object on which he sits becomes unclean. Self-explanatory. And anyone who touches his bed has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. Ah! So much effort! Oh! (laughs) What an evil book! Ah, you have to be clean if you come in contact with discharge! Ah, what's the matter with the Bible? Ah, so evil! Alright, sorry. Obviously, folks, that's sarcasm, but I have people that spiral like, oh, it has too many rules, you know, it's it's evil because it has rules, like, uh, it's, it's almost common sense, right? You get some discharge on you, Clean it off. Clean it off. Go get clean. Yeah. (laughs) And he who sits on any object on which he who has the discharge sat has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. Bathe in water. Ah, what is this nonsense? And I he... won't do that for every I, I won't do that for every verse, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and he who touches the flesh of him who has the discharge has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and shall be unclean until evening. And when he who has the discharge spits on him who is clean, then he shall wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. Now, this I find interesting, right? This is allegedly before the understanding of the passing of sickness, right? Um, I mean, obviously not, but, you know, there are people who say say that back then they were cavemen. They didn't know anything about disease, blah, 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 Mm -hmm. right? But here, this is not just talking about, like, the issue itself getting on you, but if he has an infection and he spits on you, that infection can be passed on by spit, right? This is and and it says you got to go get clean, all right? If you get spat on by somebody who's sick, you know, like if he's <clears throat> and especially the spittle if it's, flies on you, go get clean. Yeah, especially if it's bacterial. Yeah, exactly. This is legit information. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Any saddle on which he who has the discharge rides becomes unclean. 
So does that mean like forever? Burn it? Kill it with no, fire? No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it's the same as like if you kind of come in contact with his bed or his seat or anything else like that. This is literally like whoever that, uh, whatever that um, uh, individual with the with the flow comes mm -hmm. in contact with, you got to avoid that thing that he's coming in contact with. That's what it's about. It's not, I mean, again, this is somebody, this is not saying anything. Okay. Th this is a man now, right? Like let's forget the female part for a moment. When we're talking about somebody who is having a flow, you avoid the stuff that they're coming in contact with, not kicking them outside of the camp. Right. Mm -hmm. Unless it becomes a thing called um, it's translated as leprosy, but you know, that's not something that we basically deal with. Um, but it's basically a uncurable disease, right? So it talks about this thing, and I don't think it's leprosy because it even like it uses the same descriptions of the of the um uh it's it, it's translated basically as that which remains. It's something you can't get rid of. So, like, if that which remains stays in the house, we're talking, like, mold and mildew and stuff. If you can't clean it up and it keeps coming back, you're actually supposed to leave the house and, and kill, destroy the house. Okay? So, this is this is the thing where you can't, you know, if you can't get rid of it, you leave it. Right? Right. But, th but this case, it's anything that you come in contact with, with somebody with an issue, this is not the incurable this is something that, okay, he's having an issue right now. He's having a flow right now of whatever it is. All right. And whoever touches any of that which was under him is unclean until evening. And he who is carrying them up has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. All right. And anyone. And he sh yeah, go ahead. And anyone whom he who has the discharge touches without rinsing his hands in water shall wash his garments and bathe in water and be unclean till evening. Yeah. So, again, it it's it's almost common sense today, but, you know, maybe maybe the instruction was good to have, you know. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, go ahead. And the earthen vessel, which he who has the discharge touches, has to be broken, and every wooden vessel has to be rinsed in water. Yeah, so I, I'm i not um, exactly sure um, if I would agree with this translation. So the first part, the earthen vessel, mm -hmm. it's um, an engravable vessel. So anything that's porous that can be uh, carved into, okay? Mm-hmm. And then a uh, wooden vessel, um, it just says vessel. So, wooden vessel, where are they getting a wooden vessel? That's timber. Oh, there it is. Okay. Sorry. It does say vessel made of wood. Sorry. That's my bad. Um, so, yeah, this is like porous things, right? Mm -hmm. That can, you know, that can hold on to the bacteria and when he who has a discharge is cleansed of his discharge then he shall count for himself seven days for his cleansing and shall wash his garments and shall bathe his flesh in running water and be clean okay so seven days of cleansing is this speaking of a woman at all no this is talking about a man so i've i've had this discussion with people who are like Women were not counted as uh, uh, proper humans. They were counted as property or animals or, you know, there's a lot of um, BS disclaimers that they were not as a human. This seven day separation of a flow of any kind is typical, has nothing to do with it being a female. And there's nothing about kicking her out of the camp either. So I just want to reiterate that uh, again. All right. And on the eighth day, he takes for himself two turtle doves or two young pigeons and shall come before Yehovah to the door of the tent of appointment and shall give them to the priest. Okay, so we talked about this before um, with the when the woman gives birth mm -hmm. and then she brings a 
sin offering to the tabernacle mm -hmm. and it's like uh what sin did she commit by having children but this is that reconnection right because it's about the distance it's about the measured distance between you and the creator this is to you know say okay i've been separated due to my sickness or whatever and now mm -hmm. that i'm better i'm coming back to the tabernacle and this is my my re reconnection offering all right okay aka sin offering <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the priest shall prepare them, the one as a sin offering and the other as an ascending offering. And the priest shall make atonement for him before Yehovah because of his discharge. There we go. So it is, it is this distance. It's a measure, AKA sin or off the mark by the measurement. Right. So yeah, we've discussed these terms. I just want to reiterate that because somebody reading sin offering is like sin. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay. Let me give you uh, another point. Like in Christian philosophy, um, if you sin, you're like, you're unclean, right? You're there. There it's on a, it's unavoidable. We're all sinners, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But when you understand that sin is just being disconnected from the creator, it makes a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. Like you, your actions can distance you and your physical appearance can distance you from connecting with the creator and your mindset where it talks about like um, in the New Testament, it says if you have any um, uh, anger towards your brother, do not come to the temple because it wasn't a tabernacle at the time do not come to the temple until you fix that problem with your brother don't come here in a crappy mood is basically what it's talking about mm -hmm. right but it doesn't explicitly say that but it, it's like when you appear before the creator you don't want any distance between you and and the creator um does that mean that you can't come to the creator angry such that, that you can get out of anger no absolutely you can do that but this is talking about when you're approaching to the tabernacle or temple to set a designated time to connect with the creator. Right. And when a man has an emission of semen, then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean, unclean until evening. And any garment and any leather on which there is semen shall also be washed with water and be unclean until evening. Okay. <laughs> um I don't know if I have to explain this. <laughs> I don't think uh, you have to. <laughs> okay, so pretty explicit. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's uh common sense uh this says the seed of copulation. Mhm. Mm um and this says semen. Uh semen's pretty pretty well explained but it is the seed mm -hmm. so a man's seed okay right. so up here mm -hmm. uh seed of copulation let's see what copulation is okay of the bed okay the seed of the bed <laughs> and and the bed of course refers to like you know laying with your wife etc 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 right right so don't leave your mess behind. <laughs> Clean up after yourself. <laughs> okay. Anyway, moving on. 19. <laughs> well, it's 18, isn't it? Oh, are you on 18? Yeah. My bad. Yep. Sorry. And when a woman lies with a man and there is an emission of semen, they both shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. Okay. So the woman is not unclean in this particular subject. Unless the seed of copulation, right? Mm -hmm. The seed of the bed. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, there, there's this whole thing like, oh, you, you've made her, you've made her evil by laying with your wife. Like what? <laughs> uh, the twisted philosophy is in, insane. It's basically saying that they should clean up after themselves. Okay, like that should be common sense, folks. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're being together intimately with your spouse, you should definitely get clean afterwards. Mm -hmm. Just saying. I mean, <laughs> okay. it's not a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> and when a woman has a discharge and the discharge from her flesh is blood, she has to be in her separation for seven days. And whoever touches her is unclean until evening. 
Okay, mm -hmm. again, here we have this this situation where it's like, oh, she's she's plagued with the blood. No, she's not. It's it's a typical natural thing that happens with a woman that she has a flow, mm -hmm. right? Flow, not issue mm -hmm. of blood. Okay. So this this flow is of course the monthly cycle that we call a period or um menses menstrual cyst <laughs> yeah mens yeah so <laughs> the other thing is like this is specific where it includes the word blood right so this is not there is the case where if she has a flow of something other than blood she follows the first commandments of this chapter right one through 16 or whatever it is so this is specifically talking about the woman and her blood flow and this again refers to seven days how is that any different from the previous command it's not um but when people want to uh demonize the scriptures they'll use information like this about how the woman is treated different than the man etc cetera, etc cetera. yep all right okay. verse 20 and whatever she lies on during her separation is unclean, and whatever she sits on is unclean. Now, there are people um, who will say, well, today we have these different um, uh, products that we can use to make sure that it is contained and maintained. And I would say there's more to this than just the physical aspect of it, that during a woman's cycle, she should have her time to herself, her own bed, her own seat, and that bed and her that seat belong to her for that week. It's only hers. She has her own set apartness. Um, we're going to get into that. the The word nada, which means to be uh to be separate, to go to go out from. So, all right, twenty one. <clears throat> Oh, I guess we're on 22 now, right? Uh, and anyone who touches her oh. bed has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. Okay, 22. And whoever touches any object that she sat on has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. No big deal. Take a bath. <laughs> right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you... you... Now think about the think about the subject and then think about how okay the woman's supposed to be kicked out of the camp, right? So this guy is going outside of the camp to go get unclean and then like what? Then he has to get kicked out of the camp? No, this is specifically talking about like being of a, a clean not just physical but a clean mindset as well. So when the way that, you know, modern day, my wife and I practice nada I'm I don't touch my wife that entire week and it's difficult, but it's worth it. It's worth it on the front side and it's worth it on the back side because on the front side, she knows that I'm honoring her for her time. Like, I understand what you're going through. This is your time to be alone, to deal with this. Uh, and I'll call it an issue <laughs> to deal with this issue of being a woman that I'm going to honor you and give you your space during this week. So. It's it's a hard concept for modern day people to understand the nada. And my wife even uh, fought back on it for a while when I first introduced it to her because it was such a foreign um, perspective that I had to, that she had to stay separate from me for the the week. But as we progressed into applying the Torah, it became more and more um, common to us, and it became more and more intimate to us where we understand the concept of the separation for um you know for her healing process for her renewing process because that's what it is it's a renewing it's the old uh going away and the new being built up so that life can continue on right mm -hmm. and if it is on the bed or on any object on which she she sits when he touches it, he is unclean until evening. Did I read that already? Maybe. No, it just reiterates the same thing. Oh, okay. Um, 
whoever touches any object she sat on has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And if it's on the bed or any object which he sits when he touches it, he's unclean until evening. Yeah. So it's like it's giving you like every kind of scenario of your interaction. So it's saying like don't even sit on her bed. Mm-hmm. Right. That's her space. Mm-hmm. Okay. And if a man lies with her at all and her monthly flow is on him, he shall be unclean seven days and any bed he lies on is unclean. Yep. So now the man has to be separate as well because he wasn't um, acknowledging the importance of the separation. I think this is like the teachable moment here. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, so you're going to ignore her, um, her cycle because you're, you have your physical desires that can't wait. Well, then now you could be separate for seven days. Yeah. That's my perspective on it. Mm -hmm. And when a woman has a discharge of blood for many days, other than at the time of her monthly separation, or when she discharges beyond her usual time of monthly separation, all the days of her unclean discharge shall be as the days of her monthly separation. She is unclean. Right. So... This separation, this is this is the nida, okay. Um, this is right here. This is right here. So the nod is the continuing back and forth, like, um, like when you nod your head, mm-hmm. the back and forth. So it's you know the process of getting rid of the old and the new coming forth and getting rid of the old. This is the separation of that. Okay. So if it's many days other than the time. Mm -hmm. uh, Wait, all the days of her discharge, unclean discharge. um, Yeah, the flow of impurity or flow of unclean. Yep. Okay. Mm hmm. Any bed on which she lies all the days of her discharge is to her as the bed of her monthly separation, and whatever she sits on is unclean as the uncleanness of her monthly separation. Okay, so, like, for instance, when my wife is having her monthly cycle, and that's the bed she's laying on, we would say that bed is nada, that bed is separated. If she sits on a chair, which, by the way, it takes a extra effort to, for me to watch my wife when she's not Nada, mm-hmm. because sometimes she forgets she's Nada and sits on something, and I'll be like, "Well, that chair's Nada." <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was funny because we were living um, before we moved to this location. We were living with friends because my wife was caretaking uh, for the the man of the house who was passing while we were there there were three females that would sync up if you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and so they would be sitting on chairs and all the men of the house were like sitting on the floor (laughs) 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 because all the chairs like all that chairs in the da that chairs in the da that chairs in the da like okay i guess we're sitting on the floor so we throw pillows on the floor and sit on the floor (laughs) that's kind of funny (laughs) so so you could tell when they were synced up because all the men would be sitting on the floor watching tv or the movies or whatever (laughs) it was so hilarious all right right what verse are you on uh i think 27 okay and anyone who touches them is unclean and shall wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. It, it seems pretty consistent. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, though. <laughs> but if she is cleansed of her discharge, then she shall count for herself seven days. And after that, she is clean. All right. So I, I know some people that. In in some circles, um, I think even in. uh what's it called oh my gosh it's a form of judaism the most like strict one mm-hmm. um hasidic oh my gosh no it's orthodox no. uh orthodox yes orthodox or ultra orthodox they actually do a week after the cycle's finished so they're separate for like 10 days 2 weeks you know mm-hmm. so they wait 7 days after um but I don't 
translate it that way, I say that it's the week of her separation. And then if it goes beyond uh, seven days, then all the days mm-hmm. of her flowing are, are are in the days of her separation. So if she flows for eight days, then we wait another 24 hours. If nine, then we wait another 24 hours. So um, some do. I mean, it's, it's up to you to uh, make the decision of w- if this means seven days for her separation or if you need to count a seven days after the stop, which means that she's separate for sometimes two weeks, so sometimes farther, like two weeks on, two weeks off. That's it's a little rough, but um, hey, if that's if that's your conviction, stick to conviction, you know. But um, yeah, we we see it as the week of separation. And on the eighth day, she takes for herself two turtle doves or two young pigeons, and shall bring them to the priest to the door of the tent of appointment. And there's a cycle of seven days and then the eighth day throughout the Torah. So like when we're talking about, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a male child circumcision is done on the eighth day. If we're talking about Sukkot, you have seven days and then the eighth day of completion. Um, so there, there is this, um, uh, so the Shavuot, for instance, you count seven Sabbath and then a day, the morrow after the Sabbath. So that's the eighth day completion for, uh, um, first fruits, which is what we're in the midst of right now. So this eighth day is like, okay, everything's completed. Now we have a final, uh, celebration of returning. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the priest shall prepare one as a sin offering and the other as an ascending offering. And the priest shall make atonement for her before Yehovah before the discharge of her uncleanness. Yeah, again, I like flow instead of discharge. Yeah. <laughs> Thus you shall, shall separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness, lest they die in their uncleanness when they defile my dwelling pit place, which is in their midst. All right. So this is like <clears throat> when we talked about the priests who like are not doing the proper methods before they go into the Holy of Holies and then they are wear bells because if they die, you got to drag them out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we we don't want you to be in the wrong mindset or the wrong body state preparing to meet the creator. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Um, I, I also find it interesting that it says "Thus you shall separate the children of Israel, not the, not the women of Israel. Right. And this children is the word Ben, which um, some speculate that it only means the male because it's uh, the, the, the root of son but son is just descendant right Mm -hmm. and then it's a if it's a female it turns to bot instead of ben so yeah it's any excuse me sorry any descendant of yisrael and then as i've already explained in the in the past anyone who joins himself to the creator is yisrael it's not about native bornness so right This is the Torah for one who has a discharge and for him who emits semen and is unclean thereby. Okay, so now um, this discharge is the purpose out. So this discharge, like even though this one is called like the seed of the bed, right? Mm -hmm. Other places where it's giving a historic account of someone not doing what they're supposed to, with their discharge uses this word, which is the the tsa. So this is the purpose out. As far as like, you know, if you're with the woman, you purpose it out, you know, that type of deal. <laughs> All right. And for her who is sick in her monthly separation and for one who has a discharge, either man or woman, and for him who lies with an unclean woman. Yeah, I disagree with sick. Uh, Sick is actually the weakness for her in the weakness of her monthly separation. Mm -hmm. Uh, This one says monthly separation. This one says flowers. Okay. Well, well, huh? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So, yeah, I was going to show you that. So, this one says monthly separation. This one says flowers. Okay. And then that one says her that is sick of her flowers. Yes, that's what I was saying. Yep, of her flowers. Yep. 
Okay, so mm -hmm. this is the um this is the Strong's Concordance dictionary that says the word nida. Okay. And nida again means a going back and forth, right? Noon means continue, door means in and out or back and forth, and then the hay on the end makes it feminine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the woman's back and forth, okay, of separation. But here in the Strong's Concordance, it says properly rejection by implication impure by implication impurity. So like you're to imply it's impure, especially personal menstruation or moral as in idolatry or incest. Well, what does idolatry and incest have to do with having a period? Nothing. It's a separation of going back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. That they're they're extrapolating instead of like using it in its context <clears throat> so if we go back to the root of the word which is nod the noon is a seed which is continuation and the dollar is the picture of the tent door that allows movement back and forth through the tent combine combine means continue back and forth the back and forth movement such as shaking the head mm. okay mm -hmm. so when it says nida mm -hmm. here where it says flowers and here where it says monthly separation, we've already referred to this as mm -hmm. nida up here. Uh, da, 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 da. Right here. Nida. There it is. And this is what does this say right here for King James Version? Separation. So why would they put flowers in one place, separation in another place, and uh, what was the other one that they used? Hold on. Monthly 50, separation, flowers. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, so here it's flowers here. Flowers. Well, there it says. I didn't month... catch it when we saw it earlier. Yeah, it says monthly flow on the other one next to it, instead of. Yep. Um. Yep. Hmm. So it's pick and choose, um, based on the context. But again, the root of it is still what I said, which is the separation of the continuing going back and forth. Mm hmm. All right. So, so one for who is sick, which is not sick, it's weak, which, um, I know some females that when they're in their cycle, they're very weak, like very weak. Yeah. And, uh, I feel like that sometimes. Well, there you go. So in that time, like she gets her own bed, she gets her own chair. She's, it's her week to like have her own space. So I thought. It'd be a good idea if instead of me just talking about the whole Nada process that my wife chime in on it, if that's okay with you um, and the audience. I, I guess it doesn't matter if the audience likes it or not. Of course it is. It's fine. It's great. <laughs> All right. So um, let me just pull up the chat. Where'd it go? There it is. All right. And then go to live view. And then if you can throw Carolyn uh, camera up to where you can see her. Can you scooch more towards the head of the bed, baby? So you can talk to them. I didn't even do my hair. What are you doing? Okay. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to, I'm also going to turn off my headphones so that she can hear what's going on. That would be a good idea. All right. Speak, Karen, just to make sure she can hear you. Check, check. I can hear you. <laughs> All right. So, um, Carolyn, would you like to discuss Nada, like coming to the subject, how you felt about the subject, and then the progression of the subject? I fought with him. I, I, uh, I wanted, when I didn't feel well, I just wanted to cling to something at first. Uh, I felt like we had modern feminine products i didn't understand it um 
it was just very, very different for me. Um, progressively, I, um, I love it now. I like having my own space. Um, She's n- wait, 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 let me interject. She doesn't love Nada. <laughs> but the, she loves the way we approach Nada now. But I, but, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> I don't think any woman how, loves Nada. <laughs> how we deal with it is we have two twin beds in our bedroom. And when I am Nada, they are separated. And um, they're together. When twin I, XL. Yeah, two twin XL, even though I'm short and I don't need an XL. I, <laughs> he wants them to match. So here it is. Um. I like having my own space. No one's crawling on me, hanging on me. If I'm not feeling well from Nada, I do like my own special time to myself. I often get to, um, I mean, he feeds me cookies. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, the, the main thing I was missing from that uh, human touch perspective was that you do get physically sore. And um, the way Jack has dealt with that point is he has gotten me a really nice massager that's got the heated um, things in it. So um, and, and that thing don't get tired. It goes till I turn it off. So <laughs> <laughs> I it, it, it's kind of a. Uh, awesome to be honest um and i like knowing that no one can steal my seat (laughs) (laughs) yeah actually i got a big family guess what no one's gonna take my seat i can pick a really nice chair like during the week (laughs) during the week of nada my wife drives a car and i drive a truck but during the week of nada the passenger seat is carolyn's of the truck Mm -hmm. like if i'm going anywhere she's going with me that seat is hers nobody's allowed to sit in that seat for the entire week so He'll even drive me to work. That's nice. I'll share, I'll share my car with my children. So I'm just mindful that if they need to use my car, then I probably shouldn't sit in the driver's seat. <laughs> yep. So she gets, so during the DAW, mm-hmm. Caroline gets transported around. She gets chauffeured everywhere <laughs> during that week. That sounds so, nice. Yep. So she doesn't <laughs> have to drive. She's, uh, she has less um she has to deal with the children less because i have to deal with the children more yeah he'll cook <clears throat> he'll cook during that time he'll serve me food like he has done that a lot because i don't like standing for long periods of time um feels like the older you get during nada the worse it hurts you know yeah and she's not in a doll right now so this is fine this is fine <laughs> 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 all right um so anyways getting back into it shout out to commercial sound and video uh i don't know if you saw the beginning but i was speaking specifically of the conversation we had like if we were to go over every subject we've gone over it would take all day so please go back <laughs> and watch the old video. Um, what i may do i i don't know if i'm going to do it because it's going to take a lot of conscious effort but what i may do is go back through the list of videos in my playlist and then put something in the title where we're effectively speaking about a specific subject. Um, it'll be tough for me to go back through it. It won't be for Leviticus because we are doing specific um, subject orient, right? This, this is what we're doing right now. So like this would be a subject of Nada, separation of flow, right? Something like that. Um, so I'll go through the chat really quickly. Daryl Davis, chat. shout out, brother. There's a lot of questions. In there. Jake Grant, Alex Javier, Aisling, shout out to Cami, uh, Wisdom Candy, appreciate it. Uh, call for zero. I think I shout out Jake Grant already. Just Carolyn, that's my wife. I don't work around my house on Shabbat. I dirty a dish. I deal with it later. We ask ourselves, can it wait? Some things can, some things can't. Go according to your conviction. Amen. If it can wait till tomorrow, let it wait. It's Shabbat. Okay, anyway. Uh, let's see. Chuck Jackson. Let's see. Call for zero again. Uh, 1980s? What are we talking about? I think that's a different subject. Anyway. Lord Racer. 
Lord Racer, you definitely should mow your lawn tomorrow. Anyway. <laughs> 70 second human. Send sign frequency. Hmm. That's interesting. Sin as in sign of frequency. Wow, that's that's an interesting concept. Anyway, uh, bodily discharge outside the body. Yep. Yep, common sense. I put a couple of questions in the Zoom chat that were early on, just in case they got left lost in okay. the, in the uh, live chat. Okay. I don't know if you saw them or not. Um, two, two, two. Question. Is this also why women were not in the workforce back in the day because of monthly cycles? If so, thanks, John D. Rockefeller. <laughs> For pulling back into the workforce. Uh, I think it was just women were... I mean, we're responsible for life bringing. I mean, that's a lot of work in itself. It <laughs> right? is. So, it's not so easy they, to raise humans. Yeah, they were <laughs> they were set apart to like like do the hardest job of reality. I think like getting pregnant, having birth, you know, breastfeeding the children. Like you're giving up your life force so that more life forces can come into existence. That's a lot of work, honestly. Like it is. That's work in itself. <clears throat> uh, Caroline, I just say I'm Nada. I don't like going out while Nada. Often we do line up, though. What does that mean, what, line up? Um, when, like, women that I spend a lot of time with, oh, we have syncing found up. that we end up Nada at the same time. Yeah, that's, that's a weird thing that happens, and most women can attest to that, where you sync up. Maybe, uh, Scott that's, Hunter. maybe that's because they all have to go through the same thing. They can all just hang out and be unclean together. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it made me think about like back in the day when they had like the whole camp, they had several wives that the man still had to go a week without sex. <laughs> right. Because they all would have synced up on him, even if they had 10 wives to do that. <laughs> not, for a week. not that I recommend going out and getting 10 wives, but it's not against Torah. Okay, anyway. Uh, Scott Hunter, wow, if I didn't help my wifey during her time, I'd be in trouble. No, I do help my wife. Um, I just don't physically contact her. And uh, that instinctually, uh, Scott Hunter, is very good. You're lining up with Torah that you're helping your wife during her, her time. Um. If it helps, he will cook, run errands, feed me chocolate cookies, even <laughs> bought me a heated massager. Okay. So we already explained that verbally. Um, Hunter Biden, that's ironic name. Very funny. <laughs> Allah is the best. He provides bountiful rainfall for his peoples. Yeah. So um, I saw somebody say that Allah is hail Satan. It's definitely not. Uh, Allah is actually... The same thing as Allah or Eloah or Elohim. It's it's the the mighty leader. That's where the root of the word comes from. Um, I don't have a problem with that, other than it being a title and a replacement of the moon god in a lot of cases. But that's another subject altogether. Anyway, <laughs> uh, disciple of Messiah, peace and grace, Sister Karen, Brother Jack, and family. Cheers, disciple uh, of the Messiah. Shabbat uh -oh. Shalom. It just it just flung. Okay, good. Uh, da, da, da. I I don't understand commercial sound of videos comment. <laughs> it's out of context for me. All right. By the way, beds come back together when she is at her most per fertile part of the cycle. That is correct. That <laughs> that's what laying together is for. Um, and by the way, if if people think that this is a uh, a new concept of, of of separating the beds, watch a black and white TV show and look at the bedroom. <laughs> they were doing this in the fifties. Mm -hmm. This is new. Uh, th I love they Lucy. Stopped. They did it. Yeah, this is new that they stopped doing it. Uh, the introduction to the king size bed by France, with uh, which are you know sexually promiscuous people. They're the ones that introduced the king size bed to be like uh, modern, not to say that there wasn't giant beds before that, but I'm talking about in the more modern cycle. And 
this is when like you know like the separation is no longer a thing but they used to push their beds together to be together and then they would separate the beds so you're saying they made the kiss of french kiss and really shook the world anyway <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Valley Parks, Critical Inception. What's up, brother? Uh, Shabbat Shalom. Praise Yahuwah, Harold Cryer. And shout out to Zulu One. What's up? Dishes in my sink waited yesterday. What's one more day? Absolutely, Daryl Davis. Wait to <laughs> me. One more day. One more day. Okay. You just have to wait till nighttime. That's right. Just till sunset. Uh, Rascal 209. <laughs> Hey, everyone in chat, I hope you you and your loved ones have a very blessed day. Uh, Ted Somer, I know that guy. Shout out to the woman who raised humans. Amen. Uh, okay. Love you, uh, Ted. Always good to see you. All right. All right. French that toast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So how do I go to chat? All right. Alex Javier, remind me again, Serval working for money and working around the house is or is not part of it. Cooking is part of waiting until sundown. Uh, cooking is about preparation. It says that um, on the sixth day, you do all your cooking and preparation. Um, Serval work is definitely uh, working for money. Serval work is specifically to the Moedim of the year. Like, I think for instance, this is in first... reference to the separation of women, though, like the seven day separation. You know what I'm saying? Really? The no, I'm, I'm reading. I'm reading about the Sabbath question from Alex Javier. Is that for sev Sabbath or is that him? Yeah, because about... he's talking about he's talking about Serval working for money. We we've had this discussion before. Oh, I think okay. Bringing it back up to get clarity. So serval serval work like no serval work is like the first day of unleavened bread, the seventh day is of unleavened bread, the first day of Sukkot, the eighth day after Sukkot, and Shavuot. Those are non servile working days where y you can't go to work. But working about uh, 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 around the house is that part of it or not a part of it? It says you can do any labor that um, has to do with uh, the preparation of food, eating, drinking, whatever. So even cooking is allowed on those non-servile work days, just to let you know. Um, question, is this also why on TV they would have married couples in separate beds as far as the women and their time of the month, as well as uh, women and men had their own chambers in ancient times? Yeah, absolutely. That's <laughs> that's the way it used to be. It's it's today that's the weird time, you know, where like all the all the ancient uh, knowledge and practices are thrown out the door because we're we're all modernized now where. um the most common use of of products for females actually injure the female body <laughs> during the time of the month. Um, it's like this whole this whole system is to get us out of sync with our natural state of being, the way that Yah created us to be, and to get into the sync of do as thou wilt. All right, let's put it that way. It it's kind of like um I mean, watch a commercial about a woman's cycle thing, cycle product and they'll be like, "Oh, well typically you wouldn't be able to do this thing, but now you can with this new modern technology that's going to like, you know, get you all messed up." Right. <laughs> so, um we got these weird hormone discharging rings that female use and they have mm. like uh you know the the anti-pregnancy pills that stop periods sometimes and then you got the uh all those are, just, those hormones are horrible for you to take for anybody yeah, to be taking any yeah, sort absolutely. of hormones it's not good that's what i'm saying like all these modern products that actually do harm to the woman's body like it, it all the hormone disruptors sprayed on our produce yeah that too mm -hmm. yeah yeah which will throw your cycles out. Um, it, there's a lot of weird things. So there was another thing that um, my wife and I noticed when we were living in, um, we were we were doing job site living uh, at the national park. 
where we would have to clean up, you know, a couple of uh, fire pits at the at the state park in order for us to have basically electricity, water, a place for our RV hookup and all that. And during that time, <clears throat> during that time, I could set a clock to my wife's cycle. In fact, I could look up at the moon and say, okay, my wife will be Nada in two more days because of looking at the moon. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then when we moved back into the city, the cycle is broken. It's, it's not as consistent. Now it's still, it's still consistent, but it's not consistent with the moon. And I think it's because of the bombardment of the electrical signals and radiation and air pollution, who knows, but all these things affect the natural cycle of the woman. I really believe that. I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. Because when we were living out in the woods, like literally, because the state park is like really far away from everything. Mm -hmm. Like it was horrible for for us trying to get a internet signal. But man, everything else, like we were always at, we were always at a different state, like a, a very good state of just walking through the woods and being around the trees. Like it, it kept us cool. Um not just with shade, like <laughs> like mentally, spiritually cool. And then we would go into town and then get all amped up, like, oh, frustrating stuff. Things not going our way, you know? Right. It's very different. Very different. All right. I guess, uh, I guess that's about it. We can wrap it up anytime you're ready. All righty. All right. If that is it, then Shabbat Shalom, y'all. Yeah, we can end the stream, and you guys all have a restful day. And we shout will... out to uh, Jenny G. Sh- shout out, yes. Thank you all for joining us for anti-religious scripture study. We really appreciate everybody who joins us for uh, this this show. Appreciate it. And with that, have a wonderful day, and we'll see you later. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.